go. Did you hear that? Recording in progress? Got it. Did you know, supposedly, that um, <clears throat> I'm supposed to let you know that I'm recording you so that... Yeah, you well, know, Zoom from, just from... did. Zoom just gave me a window where I had to agree before we proceeded. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's illegal. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 yeah, I didn't know that. Like, I heard, like, somebody told me that it's, uh, it's required by law, uh, you know, yeah. when you're recording something and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, it was, yeah, it was so actually random. You can't entrap people. You can't get evidence on them, you know? With a video or a phone call, that you're, you're supposed to always tell them that you're recording. Okay, okay. Hey, so welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I I'm mean, if, if 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 you could actually call it a podcast, you know, like I don't, I just see it as two guys talking. <laughs> this is a great. This is uh, my first podcast, so it's a it's a big deal for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so for those of you guys who are listening, um, this is my uh, wrestling coach. So. Tony, Tony Ronci, right? Oh, it's Anthony. Yeah, because to Tony is short for Anthony. Okay. okay That's I right. Know. Anthony is my legal name, but everybody calls me Tony. I didn't even, I think Zoom just registers me in Anthony. So that. That's why it's like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you guys notice, we got like the, the, same, the same sweater here because, uh, you know, Triton Wrestling. That's where, uh, that's where I train. That's where I do judo. That's why I do wrestling. That's why I do Muay Thai. And and for those of you guys, uh, I got uh, for, well, for, for the community, for the audience, <clears throat> I'm going to start doing K1 and MMA. So I'm going to be training out of there also. <laughs> like I was telling Hong before, he's much braver than you. Much, much braver than you. Huh? Much bigger than you? Braver. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because to be doing, to be, I'm 40, I'm like a couple of years younger than you, but K1 at this age, yeah, that's, that's very brave. Very brave. Yeah, but. But but it's amateur though. It's amateur. So um, I, I at least I, I, it's supposed to be amateur. Like I talked to I talked to Samir and uh, Samir is the uh, one of the Muay Thai coaches at the club, and um, yeah, he he told me there's a, there's a K one event that's supposed to be happening mid March, uh, this year, and another one and the next one might be in June, <clears throat> and he's like, well, which one would you like to do? I'm like, well, mid March is a little bit. It's, it's, it's coming pretty fast, <clears throat> but then June is like way too far and I want to compete. I want to do MMA, but there's no MMA events going on here uh, right now. Everything's shut down and, you know, like MMA is going to be something that's going to take, a, I think, I believe a lot longer to start back up. So I said, you know what? Screw it. Let's go. Right you now. Right. Oh, well, hey, there, there you go, man. Very good luck to you. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, man. Like uh, you know, forty three, and uh, I, I've always wanted to to compete, uh, to be, um, to do this kind of stuff when I was a kid, you right. know. And and as fun as grappling is, you know, I realized that I like punching people in the face <laughs> and kicking them in the head. It's 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 a game to me. It's it's just you know. And I'm not I'm not worried about getting hit because I've gotten hit by the, those two big dudes that we that uh, that I talked about with uh, John and and Seb. Because right. those guys, those guys I've been sparring with, uh, I think it was beginning of uh, 2021, and and they they trained me in in, in sparring. I mean, in, in striking, you know, punching, kicking, and all that. And uh, I got hit by those guys. Wow, and they're they're big dudes. For for those of you guys who are listening, those guys, John is like uh, six feet uh, six feet two twenty five ish, right? Like jacked. And then the other dude, uh, Seb, he's even bigger. He's like six five, about three hundred pounds. And athletic too. He's not like he could move, you know. So these are the guys who are training me. And even though they pull their punches, I mean, if I if I accidentally blocked uh, a punch or a kick with my face, yeah, it still hurts. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, you're you're able to live to tell about it. So you must have a pretty strong chin, an ability to take punches. Yeah, I think my. You know what? I think one of the reasons is my neck. <clears throat> My neck is pretty thick and it wasn't always like this. And one of the reasons why it's thick is because I grapple. I'm pretty, you know, and, 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 you know, for wrestling. Oh, okay. So in wrestling, we do a lot of uh, uh, exercises for the neck, right? Yeah. So I always try to start the wrestling practice with neck bridges. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Neck bridges. And, and there's a reason why, like, um, I, 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 I do some of it, but not, not all of it. And because okay. now I, I, I learned that um, there was this uh, kinesiologist at one point 
that uh, that was taught I was talking to and he, he's a teacher a trainer also and was explaining to me that like the spine right like the base of your spine <clears throat> at the base of it uh, where your sacrum is uh, that means you're like you know like your, your hips a little bit lower there like in the back there so it's thick really thick and as you move up it gets smaller and smaller and the smallest point is your neck is where your um is where your your skull attaches to your <laughs> to your spine right so right. he's saying that neck bridges are actually like horrible for uh uh like yes it works in the sense that it gets your neck bigger and stronger and all that but i mean there's you know maybe uh there's repercussions to that late, later on because i think that a lot of wrestlers probably have neck issues right yeah yeah i know for sure uh a lot of wrestlers hurt their neck there's no doubt about that um i wouldn't say it's uh any more though than mma or or pure striking sports i think there's just as many neck injuries in those sports as in wrestling you know um the thing about the neck bridge is it's also not just about building i mean obviously your neck gets a lot stronger but it's also when you go on your back in wrestling your shoulder blades if your shoulder blades are touching for an instant you're pinned so the only way to really stay out, out of a pin if you're on your back is to, to get up in that back neck bridge. So that's, that's a big reason why we practice that too. So that if you get taken down, put on your back, you hit the back neck bridge and you get out. You know, so, okay. uh, so there's a big, uh, those exercises we do, that goes beyond just uh, building the strength of the neck. It's also, it's very useful in combat to, to, know, to be mobile in that position, to be mobile from a neck bridge. Uh, and to be honest, I'm 40 now. And I don't do neck bridges. When I was younger, I would do them all the time. And I would rotate around like you see the younger guys doing now. Mm -hmm. like I would jump, I'd jump over, to try to jump back. I knew that he was really good at doing the jump back. Uh, although some of our younger guys are doing it really well. Uh, but now as I'm older, I take it easy on the neck bridge. For that reason, you're right. It, uh, it can't put a lot of strain on the neck and on the spine, right? So I think uh, that's, that's a big part about wrestling is that it's a young man's game. And as you get older, you can still participate in it, but be smart about it. You know, learn uh, learn what to do, what not. I mean, forty year olds, I would say, hey, don't don't focus on doing the neck bridge. Do basic neck bridge. Uh, maybe maybe just do some neck exercises where you're you're supporting your body better. You know, but don't try to do the neck bridges like you see the younger guys doing because they're doing it more for functionality in, in their big tournaments and their big and uh, their big fights. Okay, yeah, you know, I, I like what you said regarding that. That uh, you know, like yeah, of course, uh, the neck's gonna take a beating, you know, in wrestling, but I mean, that goes for pretty much any combat sport, right? <laughs> right. right like, exactly. e yeah. Any contact sport, even, even like American football. Yeah. You're gonna like get. I would say football and hockey are way more, like there's probably way more neck injuries in football and hockey than there are in wrestling. Mm. Just because in those sports, you're getting hit when you're not expecting it. And you're getting hit by people who are trained to hit you as hard as they possibly can, right? With their bodies you know whereas wrestling there's you know it's not about hitting as hard as you can with the body it's about taking the person down uh it's about outmaneuvering them that sort of thing and you see the person you're, you're face to face with your with your one opponent the whole time so a lot of people would think wrestling would be the most dangerous for the neck but i would say football and hockey are way more dangerous okay that, you know that that actually like uh makes me feel a lot better you know because i was i was thinking to myself man you know it's dangerous for the neck, you know, all that neck bridging and stuff like that. I just won't do the neck bridges, but I'll just do basic exercises for my neck. But understanding like the functionality of why we're doing it, you know, we're not just doing it just to strengthen our necks. We're doing it so that because you need to be able to bridge like that to get out of bad positions. Uh, but also, tactic. yeah. yeah. To, to what? Survival? It's a, it's a survival tactic. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. If yeah. you end up on your back, you know you got to hit your bridge. Because that's it. Some referees call the pin right away. It's very, it can be very subjective. Wrestling. Some referees call the pins faster than the blink of an eye. All right. Those are the guys who always call jerks. Some referees uh, don't call it right away. They look for it to be perfect. And a lot of times they miss the pin. You never know what the referee might do to you. What the, re what the referee is going to be, how he's going to be acting that day, how fast he's going to call it. You can't leave it to a chance, right? Just like Dana White, when he says, never leave it in the hands of the judges. It's the same thing in wrestling. Never leave it in the hands of the referee. Exactly. The oh, same. okay, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. But, uh, um, yeah, yeah. So that that pretty much reassures me. Um, uh, for for some weird reason, I don't know why. You know, I do so so many so much like 
I trained so much and I got like a, a laundry list of injuries already. And, and here I am worried about like my neck and all. Um, yeah, hey, well, you're, you're good to be safe. Yeah. Cost, being cautious, 43 especially is a, is a great idea. Yeah. But, it, but it makes sense. Like all the other stuff that I'm doing, um, you know, any other like martial art, like combat, um, you know, um, sport, like, like the, the, the risk of neck injury is there also. So it's like, exactly. if you're going to be, you know, doing any kind of contact combat sport, it's inevitable. Like you're, you're going to get, you know, it's going to happen where your neck's going to be affected in one way or another, you know? So yeah. at least, but you know, like you said, like in wrestling, it's one-on-one. It's not like you just have one guy to deal with where if, when you're playing American football or hockey or whatever, like it's, it's like, you don't know where it could come from. Right. Exactly. And uh, you know, the neck bridge, think about it. It's only going to make your neck stronger for wrestling or for any of the sports that you're doing. And mm-hmm. also as long as you don't push your limits too hard with the neck bridge, you know what you're capable of and you stick within that realm. You shouldn't have any injuries, right? You go at your own speed. No one's mm-hmm. telling you, you have to, to go up and down faster with the neck bridge. You go at your own speed, what you're comfortable with, and, and you, you'll feel the pain coming before uh, it gets too far. So it's something you can really control, right? Whereas being in hockey and be, going for the, the puck in the corner and having that 250 pound guy come slamming into you from behind, and you don't even see it coming. That's something you can't control. And your neck's gonna be way worse off. But if you were doing neck bridges, you'd probably be better prepared for that hit. Ah, uh, there you go. Neck, neck bridges for hockey. <laughs> hey, why not right yeah um, yeah because you know if you have a strong neck it actually helps you to um uh you're you're harder to knock out and you're harder to i think get concussed you know yeah. and, and I, i've gotten big hits <laughs> like you know doing doing other martial arts um and i'm still here and i, I never got knocked out you know i got rocked but like my neck uh, i credit it to my neck you know yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, 100%. I really I, like I believe in it 100 percent, you know, and uh, there's another thing that um, uh, somebody told me actually it was from a book. Uh, you ever heard of Jack Dempsey? Yeah. Yeah. Jack Dempsey, for sure. He's, very, uh, very he's famous boxer. Novel, right. Military. Novel. He's a military uh, no, no, novel no, 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 no. He's a um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So for the guy, for, for the audience. Tony's a wrestler, <laughs> so that's why he doesn't know who Jack Dempsey is. Jack Dempsey is um, is a very famous boxer. Um, uh, back in the day, he uh, oh yeah, he sure, wrote sure. He wrote a book called Championship Fighting, right? And I think I believe in that book. It was it's like in the 1950s or something. And I believe, and I think uh, it was in that book that he said that well, one thing that you got to do is chew gum. You got to chew gum all the time, you know, because if you chew, chew gum all the time, it, it, it makes you more muscular, like the muscles like around your jaw. Well, and that helps too. So if you chew gum all the time and do neck bridges, it's going to probably benefit you in, in any other contact sport. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah now that you yeah. say, well, Dempsey, the boxer, sorry, you had me thinking about books, but yeah, I definitely know if you said Dempsey, the boxer, I would have known who you were talking about. Okay. But you were thinking Dempsey, the, the author. Yeah. I was thinking of an author. I was trying to, it sounded like a famous author too. So I oh, okay. okay. So yeah. I, I, I don't know much about famous authors, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know, Shakespeare, maybe. You said, you, know, like, okay. you said boxer. I thought you were talking about author for novels. My bad. No, no, no. But uh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, anyways, let's not talk about like authors and anyways. Hey, so <clears throat> what do you call it? Um, <clears throat> okay. Judo and wrestling. So how does, um, I, fi- I find that the, like the judo guys <clears throat> at our club, all right. When they, when they come over to wrestling, they have a really good time, you know, like they they seem to pick it up really fast. And do you think that, um, that wrestling like benefits, um, a judoka, you know? Absolutely. Or what is it? I think that, uh, the main thing, I think the judo skills that they have judoka, they come in and we talked about this before they come in and it's a great (laughs) skill set to bring to the sport of wrestling. Um, they hit the ground running. I, I'd say that if you have a kid and you can have them do judo first and then do wrestling, that's a great path to follow because judo teaches the balance. Uh, judo teaches how to tumble. Uh, it, it, just, it gives so many uh, benefits to an athlete uh, before they hit the wrestling mat. So I'd say that would be if someone were to say, what should I have my kid do? And I want to get them ready to become a wrestler. I would say try to get them into do some judo. 
They'll learn things that wrestling won't teach them right away, and it'll benefit them tremendously when they go to wrestling. Well, what does what does wrestling bring to um, teach teaches a, a, a judoka? You know, like a judo player. What what is it? Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, we'll put it this way: the rules of judo have changed a lot, but back in the day, wrestling and judo were very similar. So the the wrestling takedowns and everything really, really like the leg takedowns. Fireman's carry, double legs could really be transitioned over to judo. Uh, and they were already being used in judo. So they, the two really fed off of each other. I'm not sure when the rule changes happened. I think it was, uh, I want to say like after Nick's last Olympics, was it like 2012 that they changed the rules and now judo is just upper body. Uh, so now it's not as much, but uh, I know that, that wrestling will, the, the grind in wrestling, the, the fact that it doesn't, after any pawn or after a big throw, the match keeps going. The grind uh, that wrestlers uh, that wrestlers learn would probably really benefit judokas as well. They could take that back to their sport and they could take that level of intensity back to their sport and really utilize it. So, yeah, I think judokas could, could take a lot from wrestling as well. Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, like um, one, one thing that, um, oh, by the way, like for uh, Tony mentioned uh, Nick after Nick's last Olympics. Nick is uh Nick is the judo coach, right? So right. Nick Triton, two-time Olympian. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's the name of our club. It's actually yeah, pronounced so. Triton. It's actually Triton. Pronounced. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've been pronouncing it. I I thought you guys were pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, it's Triton, man. It's Triton. Why? Everybody pronounces it as Triton. You know, I yeah, think if it was one T. If it was only one T, then it would be Triton. But because it's got two T's, like you see there, it's yeah, Triton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, but Triton sounds cooler, no? Uh, I don't know. Let's ask Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Make him a guest on your show and say what sounds better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll eventually get him on his show and, and, and uh, you know, like in, in, in due time, you know, I, I, cause he's really busy, you know, and I want to be right. respectful of his time. And you know, I just never gotten around to asking him, uh, but I will uh, at one point, you know? So that, that's where we train out of. So if you guys are ever in, in Montreal, okay, for anybody listening and you guys want to pass by and train, you're more than welcome. It's called uh, Triton, uh, Triton Performance. If you type that into Google, uh, you, you know, it's going to show up right away. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, we wrestle, we do judo. That's our two big, big things. And then of course there's Muay Thai and uh, there's going to be a, um, we're, we're going to do some, uh, we're going to start doing some MMA now too. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. I've yeah, heard. I've yeah. Heard. Nick, yeah. Nick, Nick talked to me about that, and um, he asked me yesterday. Actually, he was like, "Hey, you know, um, would you be interested in supervising like open mat on Saturdays? You know, from from ten to 12. <clears throat> that would be cool. You know, yeah. like not teaching, but supervising. You know, uh, because you need somebody to supervise and to give a class some sort of structure. You know, even if it's an open mat, right? Like you don't want people to just come in and just sit there talk and then do one role. No, you want people to actually go there and, and practice, you know? So it's, like, it's, so it's an open mat, but it's, it's for MMA sparring. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to start that too. Uh, as soon as things open up again, things aren't uh, open yet here right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's taking some time for sure. It's taking a big toll on everybody, but uh, yeah, once things open up for sure, that'll be great because you get that MMA going. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Like I'd like yeah. to see that. Yeah, and and like honestly, like I, I've done uh, I've done I've done wrestling like at other clubs, okay, here in Montreal. And what I really like about like the classes that you give is that we get right into it right away. You know, we don't we don't spend too much time on conditioning, which 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 because I, I believe that like conditioning should be separate from um, from your actual practice. Um, so what we we come in, we warm up. Once the warm up is uh, is done, we get you know we get down to. So a lot of technical uh, stuff, you know, a lot of drills. And then, of course, at the end, we, we rumble, right? And I like that approach because for a guy like my age, like, I don't want to go to a class where um, I'm just going to give uh, uh, one place that I went to. It was like a two-hour class. And for the first 45 minutes, we were, ru were running around the track, running up the stairs, doing push-ups, doing squats. Yeah. That was for the first 45 minutes. Yeah. And then we would finally do some wrestling. And in the last 15 minutes of the class, then we would, uh, we would do some more conditioning. 
So that's yeah. that's like an hour of conditioning and only an hour of uh, actual um, uh, uh, wrestling practice. And I, I, I want to learn how to wrestle and I understand why, why, why a club would do that because, you know, there, there are a lot of young guys there and they're, you know, they're getting them ready. So they're, they're integrating the whole thing, the conditioning and all that. But anyways, what are your thoughts on that? I'm, I'm in total agreement with you. Keep it, uh, keep the conditioning and the weight training and everything. Keep that separate, you know, and uh, especially because when you're wrestling, like the classes we do, it's not like you're not getting any exercise, right? We're all sweating. We're all working hard. Right. We're all definitely uh, our bodies are definitely working on strength and conditioning as we're as we're wrestling. Right. But I figure like the wrestling classes I give, I we focus on the technical side of things. Right. And then we have live goes so that we're working on that that's wrestling specific things. And then the idea is afterwards, you're going to do your conditioning practices, whether we do it as a team together or whether you do it individually, you know, you work on your conditioning separate. Then you're going to go and pump the weights. Uh, then you can uh, run around the track, that sort of thing. And what's great is if you get a, a trainer that specialized in those kinds of things, they can really help you and improve your performance in those. That's going to obviously translate over to the rest. Of so I'm 100% in agreement. Keep it separate. Keep the conditioning part separate. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you know who, um, who talks about that also is uh, John Danaher. John Danaher is the um, – uh, do, do you know who I'm talking about, uh, Tony? Yes. Yes, he's a jiu-jitsu guy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, he's the one who uh, at Henzo Gracie's and, you know, he, he, uh, he he's famous for uh, for the death squad, you know, like his group of right. students that dominated like the BJJ scene, like uh, no gi, you know, they're right. just like heel hooking everybody like uh, on the planet. And uh, he, he's of the, like, that's what he was telling his students too. I remember him saying that in an interview where he's like, ah, yeah, the conditioning, I just tell him to go and, and, and figure something out like it's like different things work for different people and there's no real consensus and scientific whatever whatever according to him okay and uh um he's like yeah just just do your own thing but uh no when we're here we do <laughs> we do jujitsu yeah 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 no I, I think that's a good approach the other thing is he's also dealing with uh, elite level athletes you know uh, mm -hmm. who probably are already in great shape uh they've, they've been through other schools and everything by the time they finally make it Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess if you're dealing with beginners, like at the high school level or, you know, beginners like kids, that sort of thing, then you want to incorporate more conditioning because a lot of these kids, they haven't gotten used to that yet. So I guess it's, yeah, the difference between coaching kids and teenagers versus adults, you know, and with our program, we've got a, we've got a good mix. Uh, the teenagers we get are usually already doing a lot of other sports or they're coming in from judo. Uh, so they've got, uh, they've got a higher level of conditioning, you know. Uh, and then the adults, obviously, they, they've been around for a while. So, yeah, we're able to, we are able to focus entirely on the wrestling because people usually have a background. Most of our participants already are in pretty good athletic shape. So I think, yeah, that goes a long way. Too. Yeah, yeah, because we grab a lot of the judo guys and we bring them over to wrestling, eh? And it's, That's uh, a good strategy. That's a good strategy. Huh? But it's a so, good strategy. Yeah, like I was explaining, 10,000 in the province of Quebec, you have 10,000 judokas. And you have about 300 wrestlers, right? So we have some really good wrestlers in Quebec. We have some really, really good. We've got great accomplishments, but we've got such a small pool of wrestlers. So when you have that many judokas mm -hmm. practicing, competing, and you have so few wrestlers, it makes sense to transition judokas over to wrestling. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like another really good reason uh, to transition from, uh, from judo to wrestling is that a lot of judo guys, like uh, – a lot of them, even a lot at our club, a lot of them want to transition over to MMA. And if you want to go MMA, you got to learn how to wrestle. Like judo ain't going to be enough. Yeah, you that's know, true. Like a, it's good to have both. I think it's really good to have both. The, mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to MMA, yeah, because the wrestling teaches you can you know, control that takedown control. And then obviously uh, when you get to the ground, you better know some jiu-jitsu or you're going to be uh, getting tapped out pretty quickly. So it's good to have all three, judo, wrestling, and jiu-jitsu. Yeah, but I, I would say that, um, like, if, you, if you're starting off fresh, like, you don't have a judo background, but, you know, like, you want to get into MMA, then never mind judo, because judo takes a long, long time to master. It, it's complicated, you know, and it's with a gi also. So, I mean, you know, but when you're already a high-level judo guy or you've been, you know, Uh, yeah. what it is, is we just got to switch up your grips a little bit. And, uh, like you said, like they, 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 they all tend to hit the ground running. 
Like, did you see those those kids? Uh, you know, um, from <laughs> from the national team that pass by, like that that are that are training at this moment there. Training that, that are, uh, yeah, that, that that are training wrestling, like the the national guys. Oh yeah, yeah, the kids that just joined. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah, sure. Yeah, no. Well, that, that's what I was gonna. I was gonna get into that. Like, it's great when you take someone who's been doing judo their whole life. Mm -hmm. And you show them wrestling and you, as soon as you show them, all you have to do is get behind just for your takedown. They're like, oh, wow. They're like, that's all I have to do. So if you're right. It, it's, you have a good point. And then MMA is straight to the point, right? MMA is straight to the point where you just have to take the person out, knock them out or submit them. So, you know, if you don't know big throws already, it kind of makes sense to focus on wrestling, you know, before you, you know, before you would try to learn big throws, you would just learn basic takedowns, get behind, get the back, and then work on your submissions, your grounding top. So yeah, I agree with you entirely. If you, if you don't have the judo background, starting with wrestling makes more sense. If you're going towards MMA. Yeah. Yeah. Wrestling. I find it's, um, um, it's a little bit easier to, uh, to, to, to get a handle on. You know, uh, like, like it'll take you a, a lot less time to learn how to do a double leg, you know, than to do a, a proper Uchimata. You know, you <laughs> like you, you tried it once. I like I remember like uh, you put on the gi once and then like you, you like you're like never again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd love to try and do more judo. Uh, you know, I only came to one class probably like back in 2017. So that's like five years ago. Right. And, uh, and I, right away, my first, uh, opponent was Nick. So I was a little bit outmatched there when it came to judo. That didn't, that didn't go too well for me, but, um, yeah, I, it, it's hard to find the time. It's hard to find the time to do both. Definitely. And you're right. I find, yeah, the technique, uh, the, the techniques in judo or the, the throws and everything. Yeah. They are a lot more complex than a basic takedown in wrestling. A basic takedown. You can master a lot more quickly. I agree with you there. Yeah, you know, you know, like uh, one thing that um, uh, that that I'm thinking of, um, of of testing out is 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 going for more of a um, uh, Greco Greco style of wrestling, because because the thing is in judo, like I I, I want it, like I I like I still want to do something in judo, and what I real well I can't grab the legs in judo, right, because of the uh, the rules and all. So right. I'm thinking to myself, but one thing that I could do to maximize my time, like, uh, on the, on the mats doing wrestling is to try to adapt my wrestling to be more of a Greco thing where I'm more, you know, I'm, I'm you know, like essentially I'm not grabbing the legs. I'm, I'm, I'm getting close. I'm grabbing the guy and then I'm just like flipping them. Right. Yeah. Because then for in judo, that would actually be, I could actually use that in judo. So I was thinking about that and I was like, man, you know, um, you know, so, so that's why lately I've been, I've been kind of like standing up a little bit more upright, you know, uh, at wrestling practice and oh, with some really? people it works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Greco is great for judo. People. Yeah. It's a great transition. The problem with Greco, if you want to mm -hmm. compete is that they really barely, they have like hardly any Greco competitions in Canada at all. It's almost all freestyle. So the only time you get to wrestle Greco is, is it national? Or I think they do a couple of tournaments out West, but then you're talking like Alberta. Uh, you've got to be able to fly out to Alberta for a small Greco tournament. So, yeah, but judo transitions well. You're right. That's why we're going to have all of our wrestlers that are doing freestyle. We're going to also put them in Greco. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it was funny because uh, I practiced um, uh, the other day. Uh, you know, like uh, I was talking to Nick, and it, it was funny because the wrestlers were, were um, like, it's funny, but you could, you, could, you could judo the wrestlers and you could wrestle the judokas. <laughs> it, it, it it's it's complete confusion right <laughs> and and that's the thing because me at my weight class which is uh 60 well I, I was competing at 73 but then uh at this point I'm, I'm i'm pretty lean and all that so i'm i'm, I'm probably going to be fighting at 66 so at my weight class the guys are really at 66 kilos so that's like 100 um 145.5 yeah, yeah i used to wrestle that oh yeah that. okay yeah so at that weight class, like guys are fast in judo, you know, they're, they're really fast, yeah. but they're not. So they tend to like jump around a lot and then do like, um, uh, you know, do a, a lot of combinations, you know, combo attacks and all that. But, um, there's, they're less used to guys who are, who are going to grab them, pull them in close. And then after that, like, you know, suplex them. Right. 
right you know yeah you're right same thing in wrestling it's, uh you get the people doing more more legs mm -hmm. and more fast attacks moving around as you get bigger then you see more throws when you get the heavyweight it's just the guys hug each other and one guy throws and one guy gets pinned usually yeah 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 but you know i, I didn't realize that like uh now that you mentioned it, like regarding uh, Greco not being, um, not having enough competitions, I don't think there, I, I, I even, I even never heard of like a, a, a Greco, uh, you know, Greco uh, wrestling school here. Is, is there any at all in Montreal? Oh, you know what? There, there is one. There is one. There's a couple of guys in Montreal that just train Greco. And I think that's the only, one of the only instances in the whole country where you have people mm -hmm. just training Greco. Yeah, I, I'm mm. not going to tell you where it is over the podcast. I don't want to advertise for them, but if, let me know afterwards. <laughs> and I'll give you the yeah, yeah, but you know, like, uh, like uh, I'm, I'm not going to go to another like uh, I'm not going to go look for a Greco school and go learn Greco because with uh, with what I already have as a basis, like of judo, and with all the wrestling we're doing, like I mean, to me, honestly, I just I just need to watch a couple of videos and. And just grab a partner and throw them on the crash mat, and uh, I'll, I'll be okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just remember in Greco, you cannot punch the legs at all, so you can't hook the leg with your leg or anything like that. Greco is oh, all you can't. Strictly, no, no, you get down on the ground, and when you try to turn them, you can't touch their legs at all. You got to just pick them up by the waist or the upper body. So, oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Well, uh, I just want I just want to learn the pros from Greco. I I, I care nothing yeah. about their their ground game or or whatnot. Well, the ground game is awesome. You should, I think, yeah, if you watch the ground game, you'd get a kick out of it. It's really special. But you need, uh, you need to be strong for the ground game because you're yeah. basically picking up a guy by his upper body and just it's completely your strength against his upper body. So it's, uh, yeah, it's some, it's some crazy lifts. It's a very interesting ground game. I could say that. Much. Okay, okay, okay. Is it kind of like when you gut wrench him and then, but instead of like, you know, like, you, you know, you had the gut wrench position, but then you essentially stand up and you 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 pick him up right and then you, yeah, throw you him can on. do a gut wrench you just got to make mm -hmm. sure that you don't touch his legs with your legs at any point okay so you can oh, do okay. you can do regular gut wrenches uh mm -hmm. typically what you see though is you see throws that would never work in freestyle so they have what they call a reverse lift mm -hmm. okay so the reverse lift is where you take the guy complete the way the gut wrench is you take him from the other side okay so imagine this, I'm taking the guy right around his waist and his head is, his head is behind me. I'm taking mm -hmm. him around the waist and then you stand right up with it. Well, in freestyle, the guy would just try to pick off your legs. But in Greco, okay. they're not allowed. So now you're, you're trying to stand up with this guy and all he can do is try to put his weight back down on the mat. So it's just <laughs> your, your raw power against this guy's sheer body weight that he's just trying to project into the mat. So it's, it's an interesting position. And there's a guy, Alexander Karelin, all you have to do is YouTube his name, and you're going to see reverse lifts all over the place. He's a Russian. Five, uh, what, how many times did he win Olympics? I think he won uh, three-time Olympic champion. He almost oh, won. Oh, okay. Three-time Olympic champion, and he, uh, yeah, he used to pick up heavyweights and just throw them in that move all over the place. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I heard of that name. Like uh, Joe Rogan talked uh, talked about him uh, uh, a few times. You know. Yeah, and, Karelin, yeah. 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 Karelin is a. Uh, and like absolute beast man like so he does greco he doesn't do freestyle that's that's pure yeah, he like, was just uh, greco that's it in uh, international wrestling it's very rare that a wrestler does both very very rare there's a few instances but usually a guy is either freestyle or he's greco they don't try to do both because the training is so different mm -hmm. in the in the u.s they have schools uh the, the olympic training center has a greco program it does just greco training and then you have the uh, i think it's the u.s olympic education center which is like one of the colleges, and that's just for Greco. So you get guys who really specialize in only Greco. You see that oh, the countries like the U.S. and Russia, they have specialized Greco programs. And Iran, all the top countries in the world, they, they just focus on Greco, and it's really big there. And that's why Canada, yeah, it's hard for us to compete in Greco because we don't really have a big, uh, a big following of people to do it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, hey, so where does Canada stand like on, um, on the world stage for, for, for freestyle wrestling? Ah, not too good. Not too good. I mean, uh, <laughs> we used to be better, but I, yeah, I think we're probably, I, I don't think we're definitely not top 10. I think we're like 15th or something like that for the men's. For the women's, we used to be way up there, uh, but we've lost a lot of ground on the women's side. And women only do freestyle internationally. They don't have women's Greco yet. And then Greco, we're pretty much non-existent and Canada does not fund any Greco. So they have a Greco nationals. If you want to go to Worlds, 
After that, you have mm-hmm. to pay your own work. The, the rest of Canada won't fund any Greco athletes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, so, so because like there's so little people practicing Greco, uh, like pretty much worldwide, and and you know, then of course there's some countries that 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 take it very seriously, I imagine. But then most countries, like you know, they're they're more focused on on freestyle wrestling. That means that it's probably easier to win um, uh, a title or an Olympic medal in Greco than it is to win in a freestyle uh, in freestyle wrestling, right? You do think that Greco would be easier than freestyle? To, uh, Olympic? Yeah, yeah, to 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 win a medal, you know, to actually medal um, in the Olympics or eh. yeah, you know what? I think I think you're right. I think this is, you're right. There's way more participation worldwide in freestyle, so Greco is probably a little bit easier in that respect. Um, but then again, there's some countries that are better, way better. Like this, uh, what is it, Switzerland? Uh, a lot of the Scandinavian countries, they they do Greco before freestyle. So, mm-hmm. so some countries take Greco more seriously. So it's it, maybe it's easier, but I don't think it's that much easier. And put it okay. this way, the United States rarely wins Greco medal because they're so, with the United States, they have folk style, okay, which is what they do in the NCAAs. So there's, and folk style is only legs. If you do a suplex in folk style, you get zero points. They don't reward throws. You can do a, you can do a throw to a takedown. But throws are not scored separately like they are in freestyle. Okay, so because Americans are so big on this folk style that they do in the mm-hmm. United States, then they transition well to freestyle, but they have a hard time transitioning to Greco. They never really focus on it. So even though they have Greco schools in the United States, they mm-hmm. they never uh, they never take it nearly as seriously enough as these other countries, like the Scandinavian countries, and then Russia and Iran. They have a great way of taking both uh, freestyle and Greco really seriously. So. Uh, I don't think it's that much easier. Maybe a little bit easier, but not that much easier. Oh, okay, 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 okay. They used but to say women's wrestling was was easier for uh, it was easier to win uh, for women to win medals in wrestling. But now women's wrestling evolves so much every single year. Uh, mm-hmm. It's growing rapidly, and I mean, uh, Canada used to be one of the top two or top three countries in women's wrestling, and now I think we're not even in the top ten. Uh, and it's because of all the other countries. It's not because Canada wrestling uh, for women got got worse because all the other countries really caught up uh they caught up fast uh and the united states is an example they used to they used to really push the women aside and really only focus on men and now they have women who are really tough and they're they're really they're having the women train with the men they just started that recently big programs like iowa are starting up women's programs and taking it just as seriously as the men's program so that you're seeing united states women's wrestling has reached a whole new level and they had several olympic champions in, uh, in Tokyo, so they were really they were really impressive. That's for sure. Oh, okay, dogs okay, making okay. some noise back there. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, the, the kids. My my actually my my kid slipping over at uh, at his grandparents, so it's just my dog playing with some bells back there. I don't know if that's making any noise. She's just a puppy. She's only four months old. Oh, I hear something, but yeah, it's no big deal. Like you know, like my well, my dog runs around in the background also, but he doesn't he doesn't make any noise. But he's though, silent. But, uh, I don't hear. I don't hear him. He's not making any noise. He's got him well trained. <laughs> well, you know, he, he had he had his walks and all, so uh, you know he's he's okay for now. Like, yeah. at around like if I don't take him out by like let's say nine ten, that's when he starts like squirming. He doesn't bark; mm-hmm. he squirms. It's, it's a funny thing, but uh, <laughs> I think that's better, right? And especially in a condo, people will complain if the dog makes too much noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I hear yours barking. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Hey, um, <clears throat> what do you think the difference is between? Um, because I've heard that 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 uh, the Europeans, right, and the Russians and all that, like they're everybody. Like I used to think that those guys were, you know, like they they train really intense and they're really you know hardcore and crazy and all that. And uh, then then I heard recently that actually no, like the Europeans, the Russians, they they're actually very technical when they wrestle, whereas the Americans are more. Um, uh, I don't want to use the term meathead, <laughs> but they're they're, you know, they, they just go really hard. Like it's not as much, it's not, they're not focused as much on technique, but they just like grind, grind. And, and, you know, like, you know yeah, what I mean? So like they, they just go I, hard. I know, I, I've seen, I've seen this evolve. Okay. So back in the like late nineties, early two thousands, the U S was just that they would go out there and they had the brands brothers, Terry and Tom brands. And their big thing was, it was, this was the Iowa way of wrestling. They were just going to beat their opponents with sheer intensity. 
Okay. So you'd often see an American go against a Russian and the Russian would score all these points. And then the, the Russian would start to breathe heavy and the American would run after him and just exhaust him and try to catch up. And sometimes the American would get them and sometimes they wouldn't, right? So what, what it was is the Europeans seemed to be a lot more methodical, technical. Yes, they were more technical, uh, you know, and where the Americans were conditioning, conditioning, pound, pound, pound. So I feel that that has changed, okay? Uh, and it's kind of happened with, uh, you had Cale Sanderson in 2004, he was an Olympic champion. And then you had Jordan Burroughs, 2012. Now, if you watch these guys wrestle, don't get me wrong, they are working hard. So that's another thing is all these Europeans, um, don't, don't think that they're out of shape. Don't think that they're soft because they're not. They're, they're very tough. It's just the Americans, they're back in the late 90s, early 2000s, their way of training was pound, pound, pound the pavement. Uh, work so hard that you're ready to puke your guts out and your opponent is ready to pass out, right? Uh, so yeah, based on Kale Sanderson, Jordan Burroughs coming in, uh, these guys kind of got USA wrestling going towards where they're a lot smarter about their training. So they're still in excellent shape, but now they're looking at athletes. And Jordan Burroughs, for example, won his first world championship in 2011, won London 2012, and he's still competing. He just won a world championship in 2021, uh, just this past, uh, this past fall. So now you have American wrestlers who are, who are la lasting the distance. You used to have a, an American win the Olympics and they would retire immediately. Dan Gable, that's what Dan Gable did. He won the Olympics, retired. Tom Brands won the Olympics, retired, go into coaching. Now, but Jordan Burroughs is showing, hey, we can be smarter. We can be, we can have the toughness that Americans have always had, but we can also be smart. We can listen to our bodies. We can do the proper training, taper off. We don't have to make our opponent puke. We have to outpoint them, right? So Americans have really changed. And because of that, they, they're doing way better overall in the team standings. They almost won the Olympic team title. They, I think they were two points behind the, uh, Russia. They were that, they were that close. It was really, really a close uh, team battle. And they had every, I think every American except for one uh, on the men's side got a medal, which was, uh, which was outstanding. You know, uh, mm -hmm. they, they really, they really performed. It's one of the best Olympics I've seen them uh, in my whole life. So, so yeah, there's been a, there's been a big shift there. So you're right. Meathead really does describe it. Um, late nineties, early two thousands. And I used, we would go to the United States when I was training with my club back when I was in my 20s, we would go to the United States. And if you ran into uh, like a top <laughs> US guy, like one of the meatheads, like you call it, yeah. Huh? You know what, you're, you're not just gonna lose a wrestling match, you're gonna get beaten up, you know? <laughs> They're gonna okay. beat you up. So. Well, you so, know, yeah, I, I, mean, I mean meathead like in a, for, for, you know, everyone, all the Americans listening, because I, I got a lot of American listeners. I don't mean that in a disparaging way, you know? I mean that more as, as a compliment, like, like a savage, like a barbaric, yeah. you know, like, like somebody who just grinds it and just goes through you no matter what, you know, kind of thing. So I don't mean meathead as in like a, a dumbass. That's what, uh, not at all. You know, I just mean somebody who's really tough and just, you know, it's pure savagery and they just go all out kind of thing. So yeah. a good guy to watch. I say the perfect example is uh, Terry branch from the U S and he wrestled for Iowa. If you watch his matches, he was the perfect example of that guy who would go out and break his opponent. They call it breaking your opponent because you just keep working, working, working. You get him so tired that you break his will. So mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a good example of that. Now, the problem with wrestling like that is that uh, these guys, they do that in their training. too. So, and then there becomes a sense of pride. They're, too, they're like, I'll never give up. I'll never stop. So they don't miss any training, right? Their body gets hurt. They get injured. They keep going. They fight through it. Kurt Angle, won, uh, he won the Olympic trials. In 1996, he won that with a broken neck. Eesh. Most people don't know yeah. that. Yeah, he had a broken neck. And because he was so tough, he just fought through it and won the rest of his matches. So, and then he went on to win the Olympics, and now he's in WWE. Uh, but, you know, that kind of intensity, that kind of craziness. Some people survive. Most people don't, right? When you have that okay. level, of, a lot of people don't make it. Their bodies break down. Uh, so, so it doesn't work for everybody. And often... Often it's not the most intelligent way to train. It's not the most intelligent way to prolong your career and win the most medals. So that was the U.S. before. I'd say back in the 90s, early 2000s, they were training people to ultimately win one Olympics. And then you're done. 
like a horse, right? A horse runs a great race. Okay, now it's now it's finished. We take it to the back and we shoot it in the head. It's gone, right? <laughs> now Americans know they're training to win multiple world championships, multiple, and go on to win several Olympics. So they they're definitely they changed a few things, and I think it's very much for the better. Okay, okay, okay. But but how do you how do you balance that? How do you balance that out? Like training, you know, having that, being able to turn that on, like when it's time to compete. But then not necessarily training like that, like every single uh, training session, because that's how you wear out your body and get, get injured and all. And then, yeah. you know, being technical at the same time. And like, what do you think is better? Like, is it is it like you want half half kind of thing or you're better off being, you know, technical? And, and that would lead me to my next question is like, what are what what what's what's the number one country right now in, in freestyle wrestling? OK, so, yeah, number one country in freestyle wrestling are the Russians. Okay. They're, hands down, they're, they're the number one country. And yeah, they are very, uh, I want to say scientific about their training. You know, again, don't ever think those guys are soft because they're not, they, they can really push and grind and, uh, they don't get tired easily. Right. They, they're in very good shape, but, uh, but they're definitely more scientific. They, they, <laughs> Russians make it a career. Okay. <laughs> like in America, Kurt Angle, he won the Olympics in 1996. He's not a millionaire yet, right? He's not, he still has, what, what, where does he go next? He goes to WWE and becomes a household name, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas in Russia, freestyle wrestling, being a champion in freestyle wrestling, winning an Olympics is enough. That's, that's how you make your name right there. They reward their Olympic level athletes at the highest level in Russia. And the wrestlers are really well treated. They, they live very well. If they win the Olympics, they live very well. Uh, Saitiev, I don't know if you've heard of Bubesar Saitiev. Uh, he's the most successful freestyle wrestler ever from Russia. And now he's part of the, the Russian Olympic coaching uh, team. He's one of the head coaches. And uh, I think his brother, who was also Olympic champion, is in politics. So these guys have a high, high status because of what they mm. accomplished in wrestling. So, uh, so that, that's another thing is that wrestlers are much, much better rewarded in a country like Russia than they are in, in the United States and especially in a country like Canada. So it's a big, big deal uh, for people in Russia. And the same thing goes for Iran. Iran wrestling is their national sport. So when they win the Olympics, they're on another level. They're like, it's because it's like becoming Michael Jordan or Wayne Gretzky, you know? Oh, Jordan, okay. Just, yeah, it's, it's at that level through the sport of wrestling. So Jordan Burroughs, as great as he is, right? We know his name. I. He's my favorite athlete, but that's because I mm -hmm. love wrestling. But does everybody, is he a household name, right? If you go to many homes in America, random homes all over the country, most of them are probably not going to know who Jordan Burroughs is because wrestling doesn't have that. They don't pay that much attention to wrestling. Okay, exactly. okay. Yeah, that, that's really interesting because, um, you know, like my, um, my first uh, judo coach, right? He comes from a family. Half of his family, like I think it's on his mom's side everybody's like a, um, uh, they're all in wrestling, you know, freestyle wrestling in France. <clears throat> and, and a lot of them were like world champions and even Olympic champions. And then on the other side of his family, I think his dad's side, everyone was high level judo, like judokas. So, and he, what he was telling me, and uh, I realized that this is not necessarily true. It depends on the country uh, after, after what you just said is that he was saying how in judo, you have longevity. Like after you, your career is done, you know, you still have your belts, your black belt, you have your dance, you could become a coach. You could, you know, you're still kind of respected and all. Whereas like in wrestling, you get a medal and that's it. See you later. later. Yeah. yeah. There's, but, but there's now no belts in wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no belts and you only got two, what, two, two colored, uh, what do you call that again? Uh, you know, that swimsuit that you guys wear, that, 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 that you guys swim wear. Suit. Oh. <laughs> I hope not a lot of wrestlers are watching. Like, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, they call it a singlet. That's oh, a singlet. Yeah, yeah. Even a worse name for <laughs> worse name. Oh, my God. Singlet. There's a lot of respect for the singlet, man. Gotta, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I say that, but I was going to, I was actually going to ask you, because, uh, you know, you, you posted in the group, hey, I'm passing by Olympia. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, for those of you guys listening, that's uh, like a, one of the, a store here in, in Montreal that you go, that we all go to, to buy like sh wrestling shoes and our wrestling gear and all that. And yeah, I was going to ask store, you to get me a singlet. Store in Montreal that sells wrestling shoes, so. huh? yeah. Sport Olympia. I was just going to say, it's the only store that sells uh, any kind of wrestling shoes. Sport Olympia. 
yeah, it's it's the only store, right? Like, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. Unless you want to buy them off Amazon, but then you're they're not going to be your, you know, like um. You don't get to try them on that way. That's that's the bad part. Exactly. You might not be comfortable in it, and that that happened to a quite a lot of people. But anyways, I was going to ask you to get me like uh, I was going to ask you, hey, how much is a singlet? Like, if there's one on special, like uh, get me one, you know. But then yeah. I, I I talked to Nick the other day, and he was showing me, hey, look, I'm designing singlets, you know, for for the club and all that. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to wait for that then, you know. That's our secret. Custom singlets coming in. <laughs> They're gonna be nice. Wait, yeah, wait for those singlets. You're gonna want to wait for those singlets. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get one because I want to compete in wrestling too. Um, well, you know, great. like because uh, I just want to compete at this point. So if and and the way that you get better at competition is you got to compete. And sometimes like it's long, it's 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 a long wait in between. Like let's say judo competitions. So I want to do other stuff. I want to do. I want to wrestle as well. And then while I'm waiting for a, a wrestling match that a wrestling competition that I could do, then I'll do my judo. But then if none, if judo's not available and wrestling's not available, I'm gonna go punch and you know punch and kick somebody in the head <laughs> while I'm waiting. <laughs> right. Hey, you gotta keep busy, right? But hey, wrestling. Yeah. If you want to yeah. do wrestling, in April provincials are in April. Quebec provincials are in April. So yeah, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. Like it's not you know like it's it's it's, 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 it's here, right? Seventy kilos. Huh? Sixty-five or seventy kilos would be your weight. Oh, sixty-five. Uh, sixty-five or seventy. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm 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 68 right now, right? So yeah, I think I could. Yeah, just go seven. Don't don't kill yourself. Don't cut. Yeah. Okay. This one. Is going to be. I think okay. Seven. Okay. So, so anybody no, watching this knows who they've got at 70 kilos. There's a scouting report right there. <laughs> They're gonna know they got to get ready for home. <laughs> they might get punched and kicked in the head too. So you better watch out. <laughs> well, you know, you know, it, it's a crazy thing, but like you know, Corey, you know Corey, right? Yes. So Corey is uh, for those guys uh, for the audience. Uh, he's one of my uh, one of my buddies, one of my training partners, and um, and uh, he he does MMA, you know, amateur MMA, and uh, he he got me like all interested in that, and we, you know we we trained together for MMA and all, and he was explaining to me that you know once you do MMA, you know after that doing judo or or wrestling or even jujitsu, it's really no big deal because you're not getting punched or kicked in the head, right. You just I got some guy that. hugging you. <laughs> I believe that, yeah. Worst case, you tap or you pass out, you know, or your arm breaks. But it's not a big deal compared to the, you know, the violence, the emotional trauma that you might get from, uh, you know, uh, getting punched and kicked in the head. But then, like, getting punched and kicked in the head, I mean, it's only, it's only traumatizing if you get emotional about it, to tell you the truth. Okay. Like, like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's... <laughs> It, it really is like when you think about it, what's really happening okay you got you know getting punched right you gotta you gotta get over that at one point and and i think that I, i've gotten to a point where i've i've actually don't um i don't get stressed anymore at all in competition like i go to judo competition and i just i just get excited i get excited and i'm like i'm focused but i'm i'm, I'm having fun you know yeah. and, and to me it's just a game <clears throat> and yeah. so well, so i get trick, uh, hmm? i was just going to say psychologically you want it to be just right because i remember always focusing on is like you don't want to be too anxious or excited and then you don't want to be too relaxed right because you're actually going out you have to be ready to, to perform right so you want to be right in the middle you want to find that middle point where you're nice and calm but you're mm -hmm. ready to go not too excited not too not too high not too low basically. okay okay yeah 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 like did like uh so, so that's how you approach it when you used to compete yeah yeah well that's we had a I read some sports psychology books back when I was back when I was competing and they really helped. And that was one of the, it was actually from USA wrestling. And that was one of the chapters that they stressed on to make things, to make it just right. Not too high, not too low. You want to be right in the middle. Calm and cool, but ready to go. Because if you're too relaxed, oh, you don't want to walk out in the mat if you're too relaxed, right? The other guy's going to be ready to go. You might get taken down too quickly. You might get pinned, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah 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 and i like me personally it took me like um uh it took me about i'd say about 10 12 competitions before uh before i really got that i, I got a handle on that because mm -hmm. before that I, I nobody explained it to me properly so i just didn't know what to do you know i was like testing different like strategies you know like mental strategies to, to prep yeah. myself like for the for the for the match you know yeah. and and you know and <laughs> sometimes like it, i was either too amped up or not, or, or not enough. And I couldn't right. find that balance in between. But then at one point, like, um, I, I think I want, like, there was this one season where I like, 
like I wasn't performing well. And, and my coaches knew that for judo. This was when I was at another club and they were like, Oh, huh, you know, I think it's just nerves, you know? So what we'll do is you're going to do every single competition from here on out. So I did like about six competitions back to back, you know? <laughs> Yeah. And then yeah. what happens is that you get so desensitized to it. You get used to it. Yeah. Exactly. You get so used to it. Like you walk on, like, you know, like you, you walk in, you're like, okay, that all the mats, everyone's warming up, whatever. It's no big deal. You know, like, cause the fir first few times you do it, it's, it's kind of intimidating. You're looking at oh, all yeah. this and, yeah. you know, as you see all these guys getting ready, you know, they're like, you know, they have their headsets on, they're warming up and they look all, all, you know, they got that mean face going, you know, <laughs> it, yeah, it takes some time to get used to I totally understand what you're saying. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it took me it took me a while to get used to it. Remember my first few matches? It was like I was so nervous when I was a kid. Started wrestling at uh, 12 years old. I remember the first few times I got on the mat, the nerves were it was only nerves. Put it that way. And you're right. As you do more and more of it, you learn to get, you learn to get a handle on it. You learn to get desensitized, like you said. So I think I think your coaches made the right call, right, by just having you do more tournaments. I think that was a good call. Good yeah, yeah, and 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 now like I, I could walk on like I walk on the mat and I'm like I could literally take a nap and just like wake up and they call me and because it happened to me so many times that like I'm just I'm just there chit chatting you know and then they're like they just out of the blue they call me you know I thought I had like you know a good ten minutes before or fifteen and they're like oh they're calling my name and I'm late and they're about to disqualify me so I run onto the mat and I gotta perform and you know like so many times it happened to me that way that now it's just like yeah whatever you know I, I'm able to turn it on. No? Well, you're good, man. Because I mean, I remember that I was always very, very careful about that. I was wanted to be prepared. Because I mm -hmm. uh, to just be called all of a sudden. That happened to me once. I remember I was having a sandwich in the stands, and mm -hmm. for some reason, they called my <laughs> match thirty matches early. Thirty matches oh. early is like, yeah, two and a half, three hours before you're actually supposed to wrestle. So here I was thinking I had a big break between my uh, quarterfinal and semifinal match, and now I'm having my sandwich. My granola bar and juice box, all of a sudden they call me out. So I go running down. I'm like, something must be wrong. And the guy's like, nope, the referee didn't want to hear. It. Get ready. So I just got, got in my singlet, got ready, and just wrestled. And right away, I almost get pinned against the guy that I'm that I'm that I've beaten several times and never had a problem with. And luckily I got off my back, but I had to I had a nasty match where I ended up winning. But uh from then on, I was always like, be ready. I never want to be caught off guard like that. So uh so you're good if you're able to. Just react and be ready like that. That's great. For me, I yeah, yeah, but like, okay, three, four, five matches before, I want to be ready, warming up, and I want to know exactly when I'm going to walk on that mat. Yeah, but like, uh, you know, but like, even though I'm able to do that, I don't think it's the, I, I it's better for me to actually be, you know, like be ready, you know, as opposed right. to just like, uh, oh, okay, I'm just going to hop on now and do what I got to do. Like, it's good to have that skill, but I mean, it's better to be ready to, to pay attention to what's actually going on. Okay, you know how many guys are in your division, and you watch every single match, you know that that like you know of your opponents, you know, because right. when when it's like a, a pool of people, let's say there's ten guys in your division, where well, you watch every single fight, so you kind of you know break down. Okay, this guy likes to do this, this guy likes to do that, and blah 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 blah. Instead of just going going off and taking a nap, you know, <laughs> and, then, right. and then being called right. in to fight right. it, in because then you're, you you increases your chances of uh, of of success. If if you if you actually come in ready, hey, can you tell us a little bit more about your uh your, your background, like in um as a coach, you know, for for, for wrestling and, and and as an athlete? Because I know like now you coach, but you know you used to compete a lot as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I started wrestling when I was twelve uh, in high school, and I did the whole GMAA high school league, which is what they have over here. I, was, I wrestled for Beaconsfield High School. I did that for five years, and then I hooked up with. Uh, the, the big wrestling program they have here in Montreal. And I went to CJP and I went to, I went to Vanier and then I went to Concordia uh, and wrestled with those programs. And, uh, and I, I, I wrestled a lot of matches, all freestyle. Uh, I did all freestyle wrestling. I've only done a few folk style matches. I've never even had a Greco match myself. And uh, so I did all freestyle, mostly freestyle. Uh, I, did, I did okay. My, my best finish was third in the country, uh, third at nationals. Uh, and then after that, immediately I got, I, I, when I finished Concordia, I, I kind of wanted to continue wrestling, but at the same time, I had this big pull to go and, and, uh, and start a job, start a career. Uh, and, you know, so I kind of followed that path. I was like, oh, I'm only third in the country. I regret this decision, but I'm only third, uh, you know, and that's, that's not good enough to justify, you know, uh, I wasn't carded. It's not good enough to justify uh, putting my life on hold and, and pursuing a wrestling uh, going to the Olympics and that sort of thing. So I do regret that decision regardless. 
uh, you know, because things really did open up after I retired. I noticed things, the weight classes and stuff. A lot of the, there was a lot of tough wrestlers that I was uh, having trouble with, and a lot of them moved into the weight class up. A lot of them retired at the same time as me. Uh, so that that was a bad. Looking back in, in hindsight, that was a bad move. I was only 24. I should have kept on. Um, that being said, I got right away into high school coaching. I went to my old high school and I coached them for three years. And I brought two kids to the Canada Games. Do you know Xavier? Yeah, yeah, so, so Xavier. I coached, that was when I was coaching his older brother. He has a brother who's 12 years older than Alex, mm -hmm. Alex Lagone. And I, I coached him and he went to the Canada Games with another wrestler in 2009. So that was my big highlight for, uh, for coaching Beaconsfield. And then I did a year in Lachine. And then after that, I, I couldn't make the time to coach high school. And I started, uh, I became a referee for six years and then at that point I was completely out of wrestling when Tim Wadsworth had started the wrestling program for Nick at Tritton. Tritton had just opened his gym mm -hmm. uh, and Tim was twisting my arm he said Tony come help me with the wrestling I'm like Tim there's no way I'm a referee now I'm, I'm an office worker I'm running my business there's no way it's it's I just, it's not in me but Tim wouldn't let he wouldn't let up he convinced me so I came out and uh, and right away I got back into it it's like I had it's like I hadn't missed a day and I was on the mat wrestling with people. It wasn't just coaching, but wrestling at first. So I got right into it and I was, I started to love it again. I'm like, man, I love it. This is getting me back in shape. And uh, even though I would think it was 35 at the time, so it was five years ago, uh, I got right mm -hmm. back into it, was wrestling with everybody. And then sadly, uh, Nick stopped the wrestling program and, uh, and Tim left. And then I told Nick, I said, Hey, Nick, let me coach the team. I'm having such a good time. We'll do it one day a week on Saturdays. You don't have to pay me a penny. I'll do it as a volunteer. Nick said, okay, <laughs> that's a great idea. So I came out on Saturdays and we had a small following at first. Uh, and it was just a lot of fun, right? And then Xavier showed up, right? Xavier was 14, about to turn 15. But his dad, Luke, and I'd worked with his dad, Luke, when, uh, when I coached Xavier's older brother, Alex. His dad, Luke, brought Xavier. And, and all of a sudden, now we had a kid, uh, a teenager, a high schooler who didn't have a high school program who was going to be wrestling for our program. So I started to focus a lot of energy working with him and he was, he was a, an elite swimmer. So that's another thing is elite athlete translates really well between sports. He already knew because we're talking about being psychologically prepared for a wrestling match. So mm -hmm. he was doing high level swimming. He was doing provincial swimming. So he already had kind of had experience with handling you know, the stress and anxiety. So right away, it worked out well. And uh, in his, in his, we trained for about a year, and then he went in his first year, he went to nationals and came back with a bronze medal. And then that made a lot of noise. It's like, wow, this small program that's practicing once a week on Saturdays is able to produce a national medal. And it got Nick Tritton excited. He started to bring, oh, he brought over Nick Cross and then Nara and all these people who were doing judo with him. He brought them all into the wrestling program. And from there, we've just recruited all these people. We've gotten a lot of good wrestling. People are starting to do wrestling. And now we've got several athletes who are going to be going to nationals with, and they're medal hopefuls. You got Xavier, you got Nick Cross, you got Inara, uh, and then you got several other people that we're bringing. And then we're also going to have several, all those same names I just mentioned, they can also go for the Canada Games. So oh, yeah, we're, yeah. Looking, we're looking good. We've, we've come from, again, a recreational one, one day a week on Saturdays, and now we're several times a week. And we're getting ready for, for some big things. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's, that's, you know, like now that, cause this is the first time I hear this story, like in its entirety, right. Cause I'm always hearing bits and pieces left and right. And I, right. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't piece it together and sequence it and like uh, <laughs> figure out the timeline. I'm like, ah, you know, yeah. so that's why it's, it, it's really, it's, it's fun to, to actually hear it from beginning to, 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 to not the end, but to, to where it is currently. And uh, that, that's actually really impressive. Like for, for you to be able to do that, like from recreational you know, like a recreational club, like once a week to bring it to where it is. That's, that just, in my opinion, that just shows like how good of a coach you are and how good the program actually is. Yeah. Well, you know? big help was uh, Nick Tritton. Cause the thing with, the thing with coaching is uh, I'm able to come out three times a week and coach wrestling, right? That's, that's the time I can afford. But if these kids weren't training every day, you know, conditioning and they're doing the judo practices with Nick, if they weren't doing all those extra practices, you would only get so far with them. So Nick's help, Nick's bringing in, he's doing elite training. Yeah, so co combining forces with him, that's, that's been the answer. You know? and, and I know I know the wrestling system really well. Again, I was a referee, I was a coach for so many years. 
I'm in mm -hmm. it. I'm, a, I'm on the board of directors for uh, Rest in Quebec. Uh, so I know all the people, everything like that. So I've got a, I've got a lot of knowledge inside the sport and, and how it works and that sort of thing. So it's a good combination. Of that. Yeah, yeah. And you're like a lifetime, lifelong wrestler and you're still involved in the sport. You know, it's not something that you... Uh, um, like it's it's not it's it's really not about the money at all. <laughs> no, and no, it, no. This, it, this is my hobby. This is my hobby. I, I do have a day job, right? I, I work very hard at it, you know. And I've got a yeah, because we're we're not in Russia and it doesn't pay <laughs> right to, to be a wrestler. Right. So you know? there's no expectations of making any money off this. This is 100% volunteer, and it's a hobby. It's what I like to do uh, with, with the time that I have, right? Between work and family, there's not much time left. But wrestling to me is a great way to spend that time. Well, wrestling is like, you know, it's, 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 a, it, you know, like when you really think about it, wrestling is a great sport because it's, it's actually like the first, I think it's the first Olympic sport in, in human history. It was right. wrestling. And I think the right. other yeah. thing was probably the curling sport in it. The world. Everybody yeah. always yeah. talks about that. The oldest sport in the world. Exactly. We have, exactly. That, uh, we have that title. Judo won't be able to take that away from us. Yeah. And, and the thing is like, um, <laughs> And the thing is, it's, it's very, um, it's very mano a mano, you know, it's like, okay, it's you and me, let's go, you know, and well, it's that's... pure dominance, right? Whereas, you know, like in striking, you could get off a lucky punch, a lucky kick or whatever, you know, or you zig when you're supposed to zag and you get knocked out or, you know, or you knock out your opponent and it could be like, yeah, whatever. But in wrestling, if you get dominated, you got dominated. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you know what? Another thing in wrestling is, um, you know how in the UFC, all these wrestlers were coming into the UFC. Uh, mm -hmm. They were kind of taking over the sport at one time. They were taking over MMA. And it's because the only way, think about this. I, the only real way for kids to safely go mono a mono is wrestling. Maybe judo too, but wrestling, you can't have kids box when they're 12 and 13, right? That would be too brutal. I mean, you could, they, they probably do, but you probably shouldn't, right? It's kids, you don't want them to get head trauma. You don't want them to. The parents are probably hesitant to put their kids in the boxing, but wrestling is a way to fight, right? Where it's pretty much safe and you can do it at any age. So that's why you have all these kids that have been kind of held back. They were being held back and they were just doing wrestling to get out their aggression. And then they would find their way into the UFC after that, they would find their way into MMA. So that's, that's a big reason why. And then judo probably has the same thing, but uh, I think judo has got a better structure, right? Like for, for people becoming world career judokas. Like they have a better mm -hmm. structure for that. Whereas wrestlers, you'd have all these hardworking people who would put all their time and energy into wrestling. They graduate from college. And after that, a lot of them would say, what do I do now? Oh, I just go get a job or, hey, now I can go try to make a run at the UFC. So it was basically a lot of wrestlers were fed into that path. And that's why you, you hear about wrestling so much mm -hmm. in the UFC and in the MMA. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, like if you want to be successful in, in, uh, in MMA, in the sport of MMA, like your wrestling has to be, it has to be there. You know, it's a, right. it's, it's, it's like a, a, a must as a, as a, as a foundational uh, thing in, you know, in, in, in MMA because judokas, they don't do as well. <clears throat> like, okay. You got like the exceptions, Ronda Rousey, right? Like when she, she came in, she busted on the scene and all that, but she was like Olympic level athlete. <clears throat> she did well, but then, you know, and uh, well, she's not there anymore. Uh, who, who else was the, Wait, there was another judoka that actually did very well. Fedor. Fedor was a judo guy? Oh, uh, no, he was a samboist. Was he? Sambo. Okay. okay, I thought he was also judo. Uh, you know well, who is judo? Maybe. You know who is judo is Khabib. Khabib? Khabib is yeah, yeah. Judo. Yeah, but he's, he, he's more of a wrestler, though. I'll tell you what. He knows both, and he uses his wrestling more in MMA. Because let's face it, wrestling is more practical. For, yeah. for MMA, okay? Uh, but he loves judo. He was even talking down to judo because judo was yeah. trying to say how great wrestling was. And Khabib, you saw that. He came in and was like, no, judo is way classier, much a much better sport than wrestling. You know, yeah, so. and he, he like his argument too was that it's harder to win a, um, a, me a Olympic medal in judo than it is in, in wrestling. And the reason be uh, be because of that is because there's more countries involved in judo. Yeah, there's a lot more. There's yeah. a lot more. I, I've got the, I did focus a lot on watching judo uh, the, in the Olympics this year. And you're right. I was, some of the countries that came out, I'm like, all I could think of was, wow, I've never seen anybody from that country in wrestling. That, that was, that was I, I noticed that there's a lot of countries that you'll never see do wrestling that are, that are very, not only doing judo, but very good at judo. Yeah. 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 That's it. I think, I think there's like 170-ish um, uh, countries involved in, uh, in, in judo. 
And in wrestling, I'm not sure, but I think the, the number must be a little bit lower. And that's what, um, that's what Khabib was referring to. Yeah. No, he's right. He's right. Although I do like wrestling more. So I'm not going to give uh, judo any more credit than I already have. But, but yeah, Khabib is right about that. Definitely. Yeah, but you know, like the only the only judo that Khabib actually, because uh, he, I think he has a, a black belt in judo, if I'm not mistaken. I remember seeing like a picture on social media. But he grew up as a as a as a, uh, as a sambo guy because he was doing combat sambo at a very young age. And and but it's more more wrestling than sambo, to be honest. Like in in his sambo, because sambo is a mix of wrestling and judo, and of course they're striking and all that in it. But I think that. Uh, so in his sambo, like, and he has like a, a background in, in, in judo as well, but his sam, like he uses a lot more his wrestling than he uses like judo techniques. He does use a couple of judo techniques. Like when you see the leg sweeps and all that up against the cage, like that's, 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 uh, that's from, you know, let's say let's, let's call that judo, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it's, it's wrestling, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, oh yeah. Well, Khabib does that when he hooks the legs on the ground, that's such an effective technique not only in mma but also in uh in wrestling it, but MMA, is it sorry hmm? go ahead oh I, I was gonna ask you like uh is there a different like is there such a thing as dagestani wrestling or or is is dagestani wrestling just freestyle wrestling like but russian D dagestani uh oh they might you know what i'm not sure they might have their own style of wrestling in dagestan i'm not 100 percent sure about that it sounds hmm? i'm sure they do they have some kind of folk style that's what folk style means is uh the wrestling that's done for that specific country only in their country uh we always think it's american wrestling because we hear about it all the time but a lot of other countries have their own folk style wrestling so there's a good possibility that they have their own style i'm just not really sure what they how it how it works exactly in dagestan uh, okay, but definitely okay. that's the region that produces the best uh the best freestyle wrestling in the world yeah yeah they it is they just, really Dagestan. Dag yeah. Dagestan. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. You'll notice a lot of team Russia is from Dagestan. And then what happens is because there's so many good wrestlers, they, they immigrate to other countries and then they become the national champ over there. So I think, yeah, Poland, I think Pol one of Poland's champions that went to the Olympics, he's from Dagestan. Uh, the guy <laughs> that came second at 74 kilos that beat Kyle Dake. He's, uh -huh. he was representing, uh, forget what country but he was he was also from dagestan representing another country so yeah dagestan like spreads itself out in the wrestling world that's how strong like that's and that's just a region of russia uh that's where saitiev is from the best freestyler of all time it's just a for some reason it's a it's a combat like they, they, they get into fighting at such a young age just a really rough and tough uh culture and then wrestling is really big to them. they're all doing wrestling they take it very seriously over there so yeah Dagestan, if you really want to see the best wrestling, go take a trip to Dagestan. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting, interesting. Huh. Hey, you know, speaking of um, uh, Xavier, right? So Xavier, for, for those of you guys who are listening, he's one of our, he's one of, he's one of the athletes, one of the, um, uh, the wrestlers. So he already had like a competitive background. He was already in athletics. He was already competing in swimming. So he had that mindset going and yeah. he, he's, he, He's a big kid, man. <laughs> he is. A and big he's, kid, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's tall, uh, long, and now he's putting on size too. He started lifting weights and, and yeah, he's getting pretty big too. And, um, he's, he's a great wrestler, like from, from you know, from, from what, I, what I could tell from, from the limited knowledge that, that, that I have, but obviously like he's winning, uh, all, you know, uh, all kind of matches and, and, uh, and titles and all that. Um, but I've seen him go, like go up against got like utter, like judo guys who come into wrestling and he, 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 he has a hard time with these guys sometimes. And, yeah. and the thing is because Xavier never did, uh, Xavier never did the uh, judo, Like he started actually, he started like fooling around a little bit in judo, you know? Um, but I mean, he, he's never done judo, but then a judo guy comes and then goes off, go, goes with him in wrestling. And I noticed that, uh, he, he's not used to certain things, um, and re certain attacks, because they're judo attacks, but right. they're being used in wrestling. So well, like, and, and I feel as though that's what, that's why judokas could do so well in, 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 um, in, uh, in wrestling, because they have tools that most wrestlers don't, didn't take the time to develop, you know? And, but I think it's just a matter of time before Xavier catches on. 
Like I, I can well, see it. I'm, I, he's just figuring it out. Like right now, he's he's yeah. you know he's taking a couple of a uh, couple of falls here and there. You know because because like the the judo guys that are coming over, these guys are national level. Like like they're all on the national team. So they you know and 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 yeah. So like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I think you're right. I mean, definitely, if you don't have the judo background and you go up against a judo guy, he's gonna even in wrestling, he's gonna put you in some positions that you're not used to. Because wrestling, the ABCs of wrestling, when you build up when you when you coach somebody, you don't start with you don't start with the same ABCs as judo, right? It's two entirely different sports. So yeah, definitely Xavier, uh, and you know, and some other people who are just pure wrestlers that we have. Yeah, they they're missing some things there. I mean, they would be great if they could do both. If they could do both wrestling and judo, that would be ideal. Then they would get used to those positions, uh, and then they could start and do the ABCs of judo. So when they get in those positions, they're ready for them. Right. At the same time, wrestlers can take advantage of judo people and get them in positions that the judo people aren't used to. Right. They can mm -hmm. catch the judo. Yeah. There's there's so there's advantages and there's advantages and weaknesses uh, for both sports. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. Like now that I think about it, once once the wrestler catches on to what the, like uh, if he's exposed enough to like judo guys, at one point he's gonna catch on to what this guy is doing, and if he takes a little bit of time to understand like. Uh, you know, the judo froze and how, how they're being set up and all that. After that, he's going to be able to bring his, his wrestling. He's going to be able to take his wrestling and neutralize the judoka. Right. Yeah. And, and then vice versa. So it's, it's super interesting for, for, um, for athletes from both this to cross train, you know, and I think it used to be done a lot more uh, when judo, you were, you were allowed to attack the legs, you know, but now it's, it's, uh, it changed up a little bit and um, yeah. Yeah. It's uh pretty interesting <laughs> yeah yeah no it's a fun contrast it's definitely a very fun contrast to watch yeah hey by the way how'd you how'd you meet nick because you guys competed together right at one point in yeah. yeah well like in 2016 i met him because tim convinced me to come to the, the club and but I, I i knew him and he didn't remember me at all i knew him from the year 2000 the year 2000 we competed at a high school tournament called the Quebec Open at Riverdale High School. And he beat me. This was freestyle wrestling. He beat me by one point. And, uh, and it was a very, uh, it was a very, con I was so heated because I didn't realize that he, he had scored the last two. I was winning three to two and I was passive. Okay. So back then in the rules, if you were passive, they put you on the ground. And the other mm -hmm. guy got to go on top. So he went on top of me and he took a high gut wrench. And he, he did a, Kind of like a tilt that looked like it might have been. Anyways, I had no idea that, that the referee, and just so you know, the referee, the referee is now his brother-in-law, cousin-in-law, something like that. He's related to the referee now. Not back then, but now he's. Anyway, the referee put up two. So I stand up, and there's only five seconds left, and he's winning four to three. So I'm like, oh, my God. I freak out, and I run after him and try to grab a filing stick. Couldn't get it. Time ran out. And I, were, I threw a tantrum because I was 18 at the time. Still a baby. <laughs> you know, I threw a tantrum and punched uh, and just threw a big punch at the wall. And the owner of Sport Olympia is the guy who was hosting the tournament. He came up and started giving me a lecture for everybody. He's like, don't you dare start breaking my building now. So it was a big, <laughs> it was a big controversy. The other day. So, so yeah, that's how, that's how I first met Nick, you know, uh, it was back then. And, uh, and I was so angry about uh, getting turned in that high gut wrench. So it fueled me. It actually made me better back at that time that I was never going to let anybody turn me in that move ever again. So that, that was our first encounter. And then many years later, uh, when I came to that gym, I like, told him, hey, I remember wrestling. And Nick had no recollection of the match at all. He doesn't remember it at all. But what he does have is the medal. He has the gold medal from the – because he got gold. This is a semifinal match. He got gold and I got bronze. So he brought the medal to the gym. It's still in the gym now. And he hangs <laughs> it up on the door. And whenever we get in an argument, he takes it out and waves it at me <laughs> as a reminder <laughs> of what happened 22 years ago. <laughs> years ago <laughs> what i like about nick is he doesn't remember the match at all but he still, mm -hmm. he still he still goes with it and he plays on it and everything. So if it's yeah yeah i remember i remember he mentioned that at one point he's like yeah 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 like uh why don't you ask tony i, I forgot in what context you know but he was yeah. like yeah well, why don't you ask tony about our match together or or, or something like that you know like uh, and then I well, think hey, he was alluding to the fact that 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 he he won he beat you in that match he won that match and that you weren't happy about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I know. I'm still bitter about it. 22 years. That's the that's the nice part about these sports is, uh, you know, the the the, the victories and the losses they live with you forever. You know, it really, 
it really means a lot, right? It's a very, they're very meaningful sports when you do uh, combat sports like that. Um, but yeah, he got, he went on to become like a weight class or two heavier than me. And he mm -hmm. went on to two Olympics, right? So we're not talking about the Nick. This is back when we were both in high school. This wasn't the Nick trip went to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. If I were to go with him now, he's a lot bigger than me. It wouldn't end very well for me. It wouldn't be, it, he wouldn't win by only one point. It would be a lot worse. So yeah, going, I guess it's going back then. It was nice to only lose to him by one point. Be in the running with a guy who would go on to make, uh, to make two Olympic teams. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like it's, um, it's a crazy thing because when, when I, when I joined the club, right. I thought like, um, I, I didn't realize Nick could wrestle. I, I yeah. like, obviously he's a judoka, right. And he went to the Olympics two times and you know, he's, you know, a judo guy, but then at one point, like I come to a wrestling class and like, he gives the classes, you know, and then I'm yeah. like, Oh, okay, cool. And I'm like, wait a second. He, he actually knows what he's, uh, you know, like he, he knows what he's doing. You know, and then at one point we we, we did uh, uh, Shark Tank. So we're about, so Nick started it off. So he was, uh, so for, for everyone listening, uh, Shark Tank is when you have one guy in the middle. Actually, no, it wasn't Shark Tank. Wait, I, but Nick is in the middle and we got about 10 guys lined up. Like I was there too. So, and, and uh, the winner stays. Wh whoever like uh, gets scored on, like gets out and the winner stays in the middle. You know, until somebody gets them out and then, you know, we just keep going like that. So Nick went through everybody, all the 10, I think we're about 10, uh, eight or 10 or whatever. And he went through everybody twice. <laughs> and there was some big dudes in there. And I don't know what was going on, but that day he just felt like, like rumbling. Yeah. He was smashing the, the life out of everybody. It was, it, it was insane. That was the first time I saw him like in in action like in real you know like really going at it you know and uh yeah. wow yeah i was impressed i was like holy crap <laughs> yeah, where'd this come from rumble he's like me i still like to get out there and wrestle too it's, it's a good feeling although i i'm careful about going with the bigger guys that's for sure because as much as i like rumbling i don't like being injured so you gotta you gotta find the the common ground right yeah that's why that's why a lot of times like um <clears throat> uh i go with you know because i'm only like people look at me and, and they might think I'm a little bit heavier than I actually am, but I'm only 150, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're so the same I'm, as me. I'm about that way too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? And, and, and so like, uh, like I always tend, like, I, I like to like, now we separate the classes into um, uh, even in judo, like, you know, okay. The, the people who are like, let's say 70 kilos and above go that get the go that side. And then after that, everybody, everyone lighter go on the other side, you know? So we kind of pair, we, we, we group, we, we group people together, like according to their weight. And uh, I always tend to go with the light people and I don't mind that. I used to want to go with the other guys. Right. But then I realized now, no, actually it's more dangerous for me. And also some of those guys are really good. And what happens is that I just end up getting smashed all the time. Like I, I, I do my best. I put up a fight, but it's, I'm not actually developing any kind of skill. So I'd rather just stay in my lane, you know, in my weight class, even right. if I go with the kids, even if I go with the girls, like I'm going to practice different techniques and there's always something to work on. And I feel as though yeah. my skill level improves that way. Yeah. You know what you're saying is very interesting. And uh, I am a big believer in, you know, when you wrestle all out like a match, you want it to be with a guy close in weight to you, right? You want to be with a good partner like that so that uh, the two guys can hold it. They don't have to hold anything back and there's a lower risk of injury. Okay. Um, when you, you can go with a bigger person, in my opinion, there's a way to do it. And I do this all the time. Like, let's say you and Xavier were the only two people to practice. So if I just have you and Xavier go together, it's going to be a tough day for you, right? He's like way bigger than you. So what I would do is I would say, Xavier, you're going to get into it. So he's, there's going to be a handicap, okay, where he's just going to be going after your legs, trying to get your legs. Trying to, he's good. So it's good for him. He's going to learn to get in. And it's actually better for him to go with you because now he's with somebody smaller, lighter, faster. So if he can develop the skill of getting your leg, he'll actually be ahead when he goes against the guy his own size who's going to be bigger and slower, right? He's going to mm -hmm. learn the speed aspect. At the same time, you're going to learn not to give your leg and you're going to develop strength. You're not giving your leg to a bigger guy. He's going to, you're going to have to work twice as hard. Now, when you go somebody your way, even though they're faster, that sort of thing, you're going to be able to have that strength to stop them. So it's a way that you can go with a bigger partner, minimize the risk of injury, and still both, both athletes have something very good to work on. And there's a few other drills we can do as well. So there is a way, 
And that we had to do that a lot with the Saturday practices. We often would get stuck in uh, situations where you had big discrepancies in weight. And how do you make the most out of that? For me, you could give me, me and one other person, any person, I'll find a way to have a great practice with that person. It could be a, it could be a 90 pound bantam, or it could be a 250 pound senior. And we're going to have a, we're going to find a way to get a good beneficial workout for both, for both people. Yeah. You know, you know, that's, that's genius. I, I never thought of that. Like giving, giving, uh, giving somebody a handicap, you know? Yeah. So, so now that you mention it, I'm like, shit, that makes like absolute sense. How come I didn't think of that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then also, yeah, you don't, you go head to head. So you're with the, you're with a 250 pound guy. You go head to head with him, right? He might be a beginner. Now your risk for injury is even higher, right? And also you're, you're going for it like it's a fight, right? But if you do a drill where somebody's handicapped, all of a sudden now you're working on skills. So it takes away that bloodlust, that, that sort of thing, right? So, and you can pull, maybe at the end when everybody's really tired and warmed up really well, then maybe you do a little bit of a go that's, uh, that's, that's a lot safer at that point, you know? But uh, otherwise, yeah, be smart. Find the right partner. And mm-hmm. if the partner's not ideal for you, fix the scenario so that, it's beneficial for both athletes and you reduce the risk of injury. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really, that's really smart. I'm, I, I, I'm kind of, kind of jealous that I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's why we do these things, right? We share. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I'm going to, I'm going to mention it somewhere else in another podcast and then it's going to make it sound like if I came up with it, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know what? Now I'm going to be watching. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to be like, <laughs> Hey, yeah. uh, don't forget who um yeah 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 well hey listen we're running it's, it's almost seven o'clock do you have to go now or are we we, we still talking or like i don't yeah, want to get you in trouble with life. Chat, but i better get going man it's been a blast i better get going uh, yeah hey so good. so thanks a lot for doing this man and um thank once again hmm? i was just saying thank you for having me oh yeah yeah of course of course like you know uh i gotta i gotta get nick on the show too at one point and you yeah, know, i don't you think do. it's you do yeah, and this, you know, stories. yeah, yeah, and this will be the la- like, um, uh, if it were up to me, it won't be the last time we we do this, you know. Uh, we'll let some time pass, and you know th- that we'll have we'll have more fun stories to to share with people, you know, because I, I I plan on competing uh in, in wrestling also, and uh you know, and yeah. of course doing all the other stuff, but um, yeah, thanks for thanks for be, like coming on, man, and uh and chit chatting, because you know, like we even though like. We've known each other for a little bit now since I've, I've been to train, but you know, like we just kind of talk when we're, you know, when we're, when we're at practice. Right. Really? So like, and also your attention is always has to be divided, you know, between like the athletes and all that. And um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, like, I, I'm happy that we got to, to, to have this like long conversation, you know, so I got to know you a little bit better and then we got to exchange ideas and all that and to get more information. Cause like, I don't know uh, enough about wrestling, but um yeah, now, now, well, now I know a little bit more. Yeah, no, for, okay. sure, man. for sure. For sure. Thanks for having me, Hong. It's been a blast. I love talking yeah. about these so Good guys, luck with everything. Yeah, Thanks, guys, right. come, if you guys come to Montreal, don't forget, this is the uh, this is the club, Triton Wrestling. We got a great program. Like, uh, you know, we could, we, could, we could train kids. We could train old people. We could train athletes. We could train anybody. And uh, it's a good time, man. It's a good time. Yeah. So in our practices, we go from age 12 to... What is it? Yeah, 43, 12 to 43. Or might even, I think we even have older people than you. So 12 to whatever age. age yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, exactly. I'm 43. And if we have older guys, then hey, you know, uh, that's good too. But I'll put, I'll put the links like uh, down below for uh, where the club's at. And um, yeah, so you guys are all, all more than welcome to pass by when, uh, when, uh, when you're in town. And if you are in town, well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks, Hong. Take care, man. See you later. Okay, you too. I'm going to stop the recording now. Where's the... Whoop. Still says recording. Oh, I, I stopped the video, but I didn't... Uh, there you go. Wait. And, and, and me.